Hi everyone. I wasn't going to upload this vlog because I feel like it's just a bit fucking depressing to be honest. Well, it's not that depressing, but I just feel like I'm quite low energy in it. But it's not for the whole thing and we do come up at the end and start feeling a bit better. Get the feeling that most people at this point have kind of hit a bit of a wall with quarantine and everyone's getting to the point where they're really slowing down, really feeling unmotivated, quite restless and it's just getting very tough and I really hope that you are all in as good a headspace as you can be. We will come out the other side but I just feel like it's a really tough point that it's come to. We're getting closer to things getting better but not quite. Every day you just kind of wake up and there's no real progress and it's just the same thing every day and I think it's really starting to take its toll. So I have decided to upload this vlog purely to have a bit of a distraction for those of you that watch my vlogs and yeah, I hope that you enjoy it. <laughs> Big fat snogs to everyone. Good morning everyone. It is Thursday. I just thought I would whip the camera out. I haven't really felt like doing much of anything since I last spoke to you wearing tie-dye so very in fashion at the moment everyone's tie-dyeing aren't they i kind of love it um i don't think i can be bothered to do it but i kind of love it this is a really old t-shirt from urban outfits that i sleep in so i feel quite um on trend i thought i'd whip the camera out today to make myself feel a bit more normal and a bit better i just felt like chatting with you and i'm not like low i'm not like feeling sad i just don't feel I just feel, ugh, like meh. I don't feel motivated, I don't feel particularly enthusiastic about anything. And so, yeah, I'm just not very productive at the moment. I think I just don't really have much to say because nothing's really going on. So I feel like I don't want to just be boring and like, ugh. And I also don't want to be complaining about how difficult this is because everyone's feeling like it's really difficult. I think this week in particular, Hainsley and I have just both got to a point where we're like, this is feeling a bit difficult now. I enjoyed the Easter weekend because it was really sunny, so I sat out and got a bit of a tan, which was lovely. But outside of that, I generally haven't felt particularly like peppy, I suppose, would be the word. But today I thought, try and do something. <laughs> so I'm going to have a shower now because having a shower in the morning always sets me up for the day a lot better than if I don't and I know I just end up sitting on the sofa and just about getting dressed and then it's like 4pm and I'm like oh I should really walk, go for a walk but I can't be bothered so we're going to have a shower I'm going to make the bed like change the bed sorry I've got old um, duvet cover on there that needs to be freshened up and then I'm going I need to hoover and all that kind of stuff so I don't know how this vlog's going to go, it might just be today, it might be a couple of days, but we'll see. So, yes, <laughs> yesterday came to a bit of an abrupt end. Um, I didn't really vlog very much after I'd started the vlog. Didn't really get anything done that I said I was going to do. I still haven't changed the bed. <clears throat> I had a phone call from the hospital regarding my scan on Monday, which is my 20-week scan, to say that Hainsley is not allowed to come to the scan. 
And I know like in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big a deal. There was always a risk that he may have been working on the day of the 20 week scan and wouldn't be able to come for that reason or whatever, but it was something we had both been looking forward to. It was just sad because up until, well, yesterday, um, in my hospital, it, I was checking the updates every day on the website and partners were still allowed to come to scans and antenatal appointments and now, yeah, they, they're not. And I completely understand why they've had to make that decision and I know that they wouldn't do that unless they absolutely had to. It was just, it's quite sad, so I felt, I felt a bit, I think I said yesterday, I can't even remember like what I've said and what I haven't, but I think I said yesterday, like the last few days and the last week or so, I've, I guess I've struggled. I find it quite difficult, like mentally. And so yesterday I woke up and felt like, I don't know if I'd even go as far as to say I felt low, but I definitely felt quite teary, as I kind of feel a bit now just talking, but I, I'm okay. But yeah, waking up yesterday and feeling a bit like, oh, anyway, and then to have that phone call just pushed me over the edge a bit. So I spent the day just feeling really upset and I kept crying and I sort of just let myself have a bit of a wallow day because I know that I'll come out of it and I'm not gonna just be down all day. Um, but it was something that was, that's quite sad. It's our first 20 week scan. I'm grateful that he got to come to the 12 week scan. This is kind of the big scan. Some people don't even tell people they're pregnant until they've had this scan. And given the situation, I, I, I wasn't anxious about it, but I, I just, I'm eager to have the scan to know that everything's okay. Yeah, feeling like that and then now being told that Hainsey can't come was just a bit like me. In the grand scheme of things, you know, I'm not having to give birth imminently and I'm not being told that my partner can't be there for the birth and I really, really feel for anyone that will be going through that or has been told that or may be getting told that in the next few weeks. I know that I think hospitals are trying to do as much as they can and possibly this is why now with the antenatal appointments they're saying no partners so that they can at least let women that are giving birth have their partners because that that's the more important thing if i had to choose i'd rather he miss the scan than miss the birth i'm not sure what the situation is with if you are giving birth in my hospital i know in some i don't even know if it is like that in the uk but i have heard in some hospitals in the US, some women aren't allowed to have their partners at all. I know that in hospitals in the UK, they're allowed to come once you're in established labour, so they can't be with you if you're being induced, and then they have to leave quite shortly after the baby's been born. So I really do feel for women that are going through that. Um, as I say, I would rather be just going to a scan by myself than kind of going in and being induced by myself. And you know, I'm due in September, who knows what the situation will be then, but I'm trying to remain hopeful that it will be very different now you know you have to be grateful for what you have and your situation and i am grateful but i just allowed myself to be sad yesterday because it, it made me feel sad so i'm hoping that they'll let me record it and at least i can get pictures and i'm wondering if it was something i was kind of considering anyway but i was a bit like oh it's just is it a bit of a waste of money but i had been considering perhaps doing a 4d scan when things are a bit calmer and now that he can't come to the 20 week scan i do feel a bit like okay well maybe we may as well do a 4d scan so that he can at least have one more scan to look forward to before the baby's supposed to be here because I think on the NHS this is our last scan, we don't get another one. My sister did have one at 32 weeks because the hospital she was at when she was pregnant were doing a trial, but I know that that isn't across the board. Um, if you've had problems in pregnancy before, I think you get a 32 week one, but I don't, in terms of if you're low risk, which is what I am, you you just get two scans from what I can make out. So if anyone has any information on that, please let me know because I think I am going to ask at this appointment, am I, because of the nature of what's happening, could I possibly also have a 32 week scan as well? Because um, I, I think I would quite like that because just going this long between scans makes me feel anxious. Like you kind of want to see the baby again. And I had my appointment 
a couple of weeks ago and heard the heartbeat and I know I'll have more appointments where I can hear the heartbeat but I just feel like to go from now another 20 weeks potentially before seeing the baby again makes me feel a bit anxious um, and 4D scans are quite expensive so if there's an option to have another scan on the NHS I would really like that so I'm going to ask them but anyway for those of you that are interested this is the hairspray that I just love and use every day which is now not focusing it's the living proof full dry volume blast and um, so it's like a texture volume spray okay curls are a bit wild but they will 100% drop very soon I am just lounging on the sofa. I, no joke, am watching baby buggy reviews. <laughs> I don't know what it is, I started looking at buggies the other day and I've been thinking in my head about stuff um, that we need for the baby. But I've started putting a list together and I am now watching Fleur de Force's Big Baby Buys video. <laughs> I'm not joking, there she is. Because buggies are just like a whole, like, minefield i think i've decided on one that i like there's two but there's just so many things but i think i'm going to talk more about this in my second trimester update video to save anyone that's not interested in baby content in the vlog so i'm going to talk about it more there and ask for input there I feel in a much better mood today. It's Saturday morning and I don't know, I just feel a bit better. I think it's because I spent most of yesterday starting to put together a list of baby things that I need or that we will need. I feel like I'm kind of making plans and being productive. I didn't need to do it this soon but it was just something that I had been thinking about and I just thought well let's just start having a think so I did um so I think I'm actually going to film a come shopping with me but like a virtual version for th things that I'm starting to think about getting I know not everyone will be interested in watching that but I've been watching those kind of videos and they're really helping me and I feel like on YouTube there's not a lot of I don't know maybe I just haven't found them but I don't feel like there's a lot of mum channels that I really uh like relate to is in like as superficial as it is, obviously it's YouTube, I just feel like I want to s watch someone who is like me, I guess. And baby content is a bit sparse on the ground with YouTubers like that. So I've mainly been watching Lily Pebbles, Fleur de Force, and that's about it. <laughs> Everyone else is just very sort of mummy. I don't know how to explain it without sounding like a bitch but anyway so that's what I've been doing and that's cheered me up exponentially oh also Hannah Mags as well so I just wanted to show you um I think I mentioned that I bought a couple of things on H&M the other day and two of them came yesterday I'm still waiting for a pair of shorts to come but I wanted to show you these trousers because they're really comfortable not just for pregnant people just in general for lounging around the house and I also think they look uh just quite chic I'm also going to show you the bump because I mean so yeah here we are there's the little hun. I mean, just doing this feels like I'm just rubbing this vast expanse of belly. I feel like when I put my t-shirt down over that you can really see it popping through. It looks far bigger on camera, I feel like, than it does in real life. Anyway, um, so these trousers are what we're looking at. They're kind of this ribbed jersey fabric. They almost look navy here, actually, but I'm, I'm quite sure they're black. They were only about £12. I got a size medium. I pulled them up quite high. So they're kind of just under my bra. I do feel like though, it's a good size for now, 
but I do feel like the the elastic band is one of those really um, like reinforced ones so I feel like it's already putting pressure on my stomach and to wear these all day I'll probably get uncomfortable a bit later so I might also get a pair in large for when I do get bigger but I do think that these will be great for uh, post-pregnancy as well which is what I'm also taking into consideration when I'm buying things. I'm quite aware that I'll probably want loose, very comfortable, easy things to wear once I have had the baby, which isn't till September, by the way. And I think these will just be perfect. They're really airy. They're just so comfortable for wearing around the house. But I do also think you could probably dress them up with like a really oversized white linen shirt or something and some nice Birkenstocks in the summer. When it comes to buying maternity wear, I think I've mentioned before, I don't, I'm trying to still buy things that I would generally wear. I don't really want to have to buy maternity jeans, for example, or maternity trousers, because I feel like they're slightly more expensive and I will only wear them now. Whereas if I buy really floaty dresses, really floaty trousers, anything elasticated, I will probably wear that afterwards as well. So I'm just trying to be as sensible as possible, not just, just not waste money, to be honest, on things that I don't need to waste money on. That's where we are. I feel, God, I feel really out of breath when I speak at the moment. <laughs> That's probably because that's what comes from sitting on the sofa for weeks on end, I suppose. I am just parboiling some potatoes. It's very loud, actually. We are having potato wedges. Haynes is having steak and sweet corn, and I am having chicken breast and sweet corn and coleslaw for dinner. I think I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I feel like it's been a bit of a downer. <laughs> I guess it's an accurate representation of probably how everyone's feeling now. Um, but yeah, I hope it wasn't too much of a downer for you and it was at least a bit of a distraction. And I hope that wherever you are, you are feeling safe and well and okay and getting through as best you can. And yeah, I will see you on the next one. Mwah.